All right, Shalom. First and foremost, all praise and glories unto Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, Bashim, Hamakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders at the great millstone, and greetings, salutations, and blessings unto the elect. Shalom unto you. <coughs> Salak, excuse my voice. <coughs> all right, this is your brother, Shaquat from the Las Vegas camp. And um, I just want to touch on double speak. I mean, it's been going around through the spirit. Brother's been looking into it. Brother's been talking about it. You know, we can see this devil using it. Okay, and that's kind of what I want to uh, go into. Um, so, uh, let me think how I should start this. Um, well, anyway, double speak is basically saying something, but having it having another meaning. Okay, as it says in this video, I got off the What I Learned uh, channel here on YouTube. It says, uh, double speak, how to lie without lying. And we know that that's one of the tactics that this devil uses, okay? So let me get a script real quick, and then I'll, I'll go right back with that one later. But we'll get this one. Second <clears throat> um, Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, it says, uh, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Okay? His devices are how to trip us up in words, okay? Part of what he does is tripping us up in words. Okay, he loves to uh, get an advantage of us. Okay, he loves to, to to do one thing or show us one thing, but then there be a hidden message behind it. Matter of fact, I'll get another one real quick, <clears throat> which is on Sirach. Sirach uh, 10... Uh, let me get right to the point. So look, it's 12. See right 12. Um, 13, is it? Let me see. I think it's 13. Let me see. Mm, let me see, let me see. Yeah, let me um let me see. Uh yep, verse um bear with me one second. Um, all right, so Yep, it says down. Let's start uh, verse 9. Uh, Sirach 13 and 9 says, If thou be invited of a mighty man, withdraw thyself. And so much more, excuse me, much the more he will invite thee. <clears throat> it says, um, Press thou not upon him, lest thou be put back and stand afar off. That's not the one. But here it goes in 10. Lest thou be forgotten. It says, uh, Affect not to be made equal unto him in talk. And believe not his many words, uh, for with much communication he will tempt thee, and smiling upon thee will he get out thy secrets. Yeah, <clears throat> and so you have to be careful when you're speaking with Esau. Okay, this man will will have you um, uh, getting all your, your your closest secrets. Hey, he's already we already know he's doing that with this internet. He looks at what you search in your IP address and all that. Then he throws those things. He's listening through the through the uh, through the microphones and watching through the cameras. Okay, on these smartphones. <clears throat> Thank you, Patriot Act One and Two. And what he does, and even the whole Edward Snowden thing, the Big Brother thing, right? He he actually um will use that to market, as he says, with you. We know that there were um new um uh Instagram um terms and. Terms of service that says he can go right into your phone and, and look up anything and use it for whatever he wants. Okay? <clears throat> and a lot of people like to believe um, those with nothing to hide, hide nothing. Yeah, but there's some things that you're supposed to keep away from certain people. Okay? And this is telling you, said, for with much communication will he tempt thee, and much sm and smiling upon thee he will get out thy secrets. It would keep. keep to keep going, it says, but cruel, cruelly he will lay up thy words and will not spare to do thee hurt and to put thee in prison. Okay? He will do you hurt and put thee in prison. 
It says, um, that was the one I wanted. But it was another one. I think it's in the 12th. Come on. Yeah, 16. Sirach 12 and 16. It says, an enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but in his heart he imagines how to throw thee into a pit. Okay, so he gets all of these things. But we know when he when he when he speaks to you, he get, he says all of these things that that make you believe in him, that make you want to follow him. Let's trust Joe Biden. He ain't been good ever, but let's trust him this one time, this one more time. We already voted for him with with Obama. Let's let's do it again. We can we can make it happen. Okay, not realizing trusting in anybody but Yahweh Bashim Al Shai is going to be your detriment. Okay. It says, um, but he imagined how to throw thee into a pit. He will weep with his eyes. He's so sorrowful what happened to the black community. And he's changed his ways. Okay, now when we read up in this chapter, we know that ain't true. <clears throat> said, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. All right. If adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. So who's supposed to solve this for us? Okay, who who can we trust to solve this for us? If we can't trust the so-called white man, who's in rulership and leadership uh, according to, to the world today? That's who we have to go to for the one of all things. Who who do we trust? You trust in, in, in your maker, though him that is like us. Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai? That's who you trust in, okay? <clears throat> but you have to first know that they are our people and, uh, and we are their people, should I say, and we leave and look like them, okay? You, you Negro, Latino, and Native Americans, Yahweh, which, which, uh, and, and Yahweh Shai, which today would be described as so-called black men, okay, in their appearance, all right? So they understand that, and, and, uh, and that's who put us in this predicament in the first place, this slavery, this captivity under the so-called white man, okay? It is Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. All right, and this even goes the double speak thing even goes deeper into the um into the Maxine Waters and all of that. Okay, so you have to understand what they're what they're actually doing. It's giving you something, and then and then um to to lure you, and then they they trap you up with the with what they're actually doing. Okay, so let me go back out of that, and I want to play the, the um I play this small clip from this. It's worse than every generation and conceals the truth. Americans, I have double speak. Slightly. You see, I don't like euphemisms. I don't like language that reflects fear and conceals the truth. Americans can't really handle the truth, so they invent soft language to protect themselves. And it gets worse with every generation. Sometime during my lifetime, toilet paper became bathroom tissue. <laughs> Used cars became previously owned transportation, and constipation became occasional irregularity. Poor people used to live in slums. Now, the economically disadvantaged occupy substandard housing in the inner cities. They don't have a negative cash flow position. They're broke. Okay. That's funny. It went right to commercial with that. But that was the point. Okay, let me get rid of it. All right. And so um, that was an example of double speaking euphemisms, okay? And that's what, what they learned that they've been doing with it. So I've got this article. Um, yeah, this one here. <clears throat> it says editorial. This is back in, um, what year was this? 2017, December 2017. It says editorial talking about climate change in Orwellian double speak. Doesn't make it go away. Okay? Because even, and I'm going to link that video that I got the clip of George Carlin in. That was a great uh, double speak, you know, a video. That's what kind of sparked this. That's what sparked this lesson. And I'm going to put that in the description. Check it out. A hey, it's, it's very informative. All right? <clears throat> it shows you how this devil will say one thing, but then mean something totally different. All right? It says, um, Donald, President Donald Trump speaks and lays out a national security strategy that de-emphasizes climate change in Washington on, on December the 18th. 
All right. So, um, and they, and they uh, actually speak about this book and, um, in that, in that video it says, if president Trump were a reader of books, we'd recommend a nearly 70 year old book, excuse me, old novel to him, which it illustrates nicely, both the absurdity and the danger of perverting language for political ends. Okay, the book is George Orwell's 1984, which gave us the concept of new speak. Okay, new speak, new think, and uh, and double speak even. Okay, <clears throat> meaning it's a new word to say. Man, that's fire. Does that mean that it's the gas? You know, uh, burn it burns and and so on and so forth. No, it means it's lit, <laughs> you know, it means, it doesn't mean that, it means, I'm just using another one, it means um, an idea or, or, or an energy that comes with it, or an excitement that comes with it, okay, is used in a, in a new speak, it's not only the word that it once was, it's, it's the word that now it put in, 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 in context of, of, of something else that is, that is placed with, not the original creation of the word, and here at Great Millstone, we're taught through the apostles to always go into these words, okay? And to find out the meaning of these words because sometimes this devil will use the words in new speak. Sometimes he'll use it in old English and we'll, we'll be caught up, you know, uh, trying to figure out which one to get the meaning. But when you go into the meanings, you can see exactly what they're doing. Even in the Bible, we do that, okay? It says a language invented by government and of ministries that do the exact opposite of what their name imply i.e. a ministry of peace that is in charge of waging permanent war and a ministry of truth churning out lies. Okay, who does that sound like? That sounds like this damn devil. Okay. Um, so I'm actually going to continue to um, in, in the lesson, but that was the point of it. Now, let me get into this climate change, okay? What, what actually, actually what uh president said. Matter of fact, said so the Trump administration hasn't hit full Orwellian mode, but it seems to be trying awfully hard. The new national security strategy unveiled Monday drops all references to climate change as a threat to national security, despite the clear risk posing by raising, excuse me, by rising seas, altered storm and drought patterns, and the political instability of mass human migration. Such changes are expected to cause. Okay. <clears throat> it says, climate is, quote, climate policies which continue to shape the global energy system, the report says, but then it goes on to frame the issue in terms of the U.S.'s role in countering an anti-growth energy agenda that is detrimental to U.S. economic and energy security interests. <laughs> so what does that any of that mean? It means we're gonna use money to we're gonna cut back money on the on the on the um <clears throat> on the the natural causes of what's going on, and we're gonna invest it in, in the changes that are gonna happen to the causes of what's going on. We're not gonna stop using aerosol cans. We're gonna put up a wall so those that migrate away from where the, the climate is changing and making them leave because of natural disaster or whatever, we're going to put a wall up so they can't invade our spaces. It's the same type of idea, okay? But the point is, always being um, on point or, or, or figuring out the, the, the double speak or the new speak or the double think, okay? So it says here, at the end of this, it says, so the fight against climate is the risk of, to national security not climate change itself. Okay? So that there, there you go with that article. So let's go back now to um to the scriptures. Okay. Um let's go to Psalms. <clears throat> Oops. Psalm fifty five and uh twenty one. It says, um <clears throat> the words of his mouth were smoother than butter but war was in his heart. And so, yeah, it looks like our, our, our president-elect is coming in to, to just make everything wonderful. The, the Maxine Waters is right on time to save the day and all of that. But do you understand that 
you're giving up civil liberties and the right to live and so many other things uh, with this agenda that's being pushed. You don't even see it. Okay, because now the max the vaccination and Maxine Waters will be mandatory. Okay, you have to take. But then there's a deadlier strand that's out, a new mutated strand. So it's out, but you got to take both of them. Then kind of forget the side effects that we haven't tested on anybody, you know, in large number and in, 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 in long term. But we're just go ahead and take it. Okay, you needed to, to participate in these certain things in society. All right. That's the type of way that they're, they're, they're pushing this out to us in the public. And what do we do? We don't have many choices of what we can and cannot do, okay, as far as um, to continue um, in society. That's why we, through the, through the Bible, if you're not pushing the Bible right, man, you off. Because the only way to get out of this trap is for the Heavenly Father to send His Son back to rescue us out of it, okay? It's for more destruction to continue. It's for times to get worse and worse and worse, not trying to save it and preserve it on this side. Okay, and that's the plan of this, of this man. It says, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Okay, that's the double speak there for you. Okay, it's warning you about that double speak. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I'm going to end it there. I think I had a couple of them that, that, uh, that I was thinking on, but this I, I think here's the point is just to be something quick to put out there um the point was to to allude um into the mentality of watching the double speak video it says uh double speak how to lie without lying um very good video when you when you understand double speak and then, and i even throw this out there real quick there's even situations where you can use double speak to your advantage okay that's the how shy used double speak to his advantage okay those parables that he taught. I didn't. I was going to go into it, but it wasn't meant to be a very long video. But just so you that, that do understand, can understand. He taught parables, talking about one, it sounded like he was talking about one thing, but he was talking about something else. So there's a righteous way to do it and a wicked way to do it. The wicked way is the way that has been done unto us and our people. The righteous way <clears throat> is to use it, like Paul even said, I, um, I lie though I may, uh, that I may gain it, gain them in the truth. I forgot exactly how that goes, but he's basically saying he's used subtlety to, uh, to, to 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 trap them into the truth. He used whatever was necessary to pull them on in to get their eyes open to this truth. And that's a form of double speak as well. Um, another example of, of someone that uses double speak was uh, that character um, Polite, Brother Polite. He was used another form of it when you get into the video that, that shows you when somebody's talking excessively. And covering up a whole lot of information or using a whole lot of um, words to hide the real sense of information or the fact that he doesn't know or, or, or so on and so forth. OK, so I just want to kind of throw that out to you so you can uh, kind of get on a level and see how this new speak thing has been, been happening and how people um, have been using it against you and how you can can see it and then that can help you. Uh, um, guide you through the spirit, okay? So anyway, I'm going to close it right there, giving all praise and glory. Lord willing, this was edifying. Giving all praises and glories unto Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh, Shai, Ba'ashim, Ar-Kakudash, that belongs to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone, and greetings, salutations, and blessings unto the hopeful elect. Till then, Shalom.